Hello Internet and welcome back. This is the second video uh, about my screen machine project. Um, so I better start from the beginning and do a recap. So I figured out that you can get um, PCB stencils for, for soldering paste uh, on a frame. And this is about $9, uh, $9, $10, so they are really, really cheap. I'm not gonna be able to do PCBs larger than this uh, at my home workshop anyway. Uh, and the frame is a fixed size, so hey, um, I got a few of these uh, for different projects. And uh, I decided to make a machine that could help me put on the solder paste. And not long ago, I got an offer uh, for free PCBs, and who don't like who doesn't like free PCBs? So I got these made at uh, uh, PCB Way, I think. Sorry, I haven't made the review yet. Uh, I'm getting there slowly because I need uh, to put on some solder paste on these PCBs. Um, so I screwed up the uh, the paneling process. So I got a one by one panel. Well, that's how it goes sometimes. But I got the screen. Uh, the the solder uh, stencil screen uh, or the the solder paste stencil on a frame, and um, I was uh, leaving uh, the end of the part one video about uh, when uh, where I was assembling the machine. So I've designed a bit more. Let's have a look at it. So this is my uh, unshaped design, and uh, if I open up the frame here, uh, the top frame here uh, is where the screen is attached. You can see that I made something to hold the PCB. Hey, great. Um, and I'll just quickly show you, uh, this is all uh, encapsulated here. This is, a, basically it's an X, Y table. Uh, so it allows me to adjust uh, X and Y axis. And uh, then on top I have a plate here. I really was trying to keep all parts as cheap as possible so everything can be 3D printed and are uh, things that you know from 3D printers like linear bearings and stuff like that. Um, I couldn't find a good solution for this top plate here. I mean, we could do with a smaller plate, but for for my purposes, I need a, a plate that is slightly larger. You can you can you can move these um, support blocks uh, inward towards the middle and probably get away with a 3D printed um, top here. But also, we have uh, the block in the middle that attaches the um, to the threaded rod, uh, we'll, we'll, we will have to have uh, space for that still, so we cannot change all dimensions uh, as we want to. But uh, but you could definitely make this uh, smaller if you needed to. Um, but if you have access to laser cutter, you can get this done in about five minutes. Uh, it's a three millimeter thick acrylic. I've made uh, mine using acrylic because that was the most sturdy material that I could find. I didn't want to go with wood because I'm used to working with, with birch plywood and the size difference is really massive sometimes. I was curious about if I could use HDF, which is also a very common material, at least in our workshop, but I was suspecting that um, that it wouldn't be sturdy enough. And I wanted to avoid having wood in my design because, I mean, it tends to warp and bend over time. So I went with acrylic. Um, yeah. so. This is the only part that you really need to do in laser cutter. I had several uh, different designs of the of the middle piece here. So this uh, was the first one. I'll just show you on this big screen here. This was the first one. The idea is that you can print this flat and then you can just attach uh, the bearing uh, holders um, underneath. If you go back to the design, you can see that the bearings are encapsulated between two separate blocks, but you have holes going all the way through for for the screws. And then I made a, a small nut trap here that can trap nuts from either side. So you can uh, so actually the top piece here and the bottom piece down here are identical. And uh, of course we just repeat that for um, each corner of this plate. Uh, the middle plate here ended up with being a very large print. I think it took around 10 hours and you could make it smaller. And if you designed, redesigned this, I'm actually considering doing this. I would change this to having not two screws, but one screw going all the way through because it just simplifies the design tremendously. And you don't need to, you need support to do pr to print this. And it's just really a hassle to, yeah, take it all out. So um, 
I screwed up the design, I made this 24 millimeters, so the bearings are a bit loose in my uh, first version here. Uh, and also I made I made the, the axle axis too low, so if you go here back to our assembly and look, look at it here from the front, you can see that this axis here, or the axle, is um, is hitting the frame itself. And that means that I can't make an adjusted knob that is outside the machine. Not that it's really necessary, but it's, it's nice to be able to adjust the machine without getting your hand underneath everything. The last thing I needed to do was to make a custom bracket, uh, which is this one on top here. Uh, this custom bracket is for holding the PCB. Uh, in the machine and actually it works really really well so the the thing is that i just designed this uh, with no tolerances i just measured the pcb that i need to cram into the machine and then i made a lot of mounting holes that's basically it uh, one last mistake i did uh, a lot of which i haven't found yet probably but these holes here are 3.9 millimeters because i figured then i could just do a uh, a thread when I uh, inserted the screw, but uh, the laser cutter is not accurate enough So I need to find Just the right size so I can get an M4 screw to to really grip into these holes um, So th the fit is a bit loose uh, In in the holder and I will need to redo the top plate um, But that's about it. I will show you how the machine works uh, and I can tell you that so far it seems to be working uh, But let's have a look at uh, how it it looks uh, uh, it's performing okay so you probably can't see it really well but we have the acrylic plate here and uh, I have an adjustment knob here and if I turn this I will just translate the whole setup here on one axis and then I can use if we can get a hold this is the other axis so I can translate again X and Y here so that works I would really want to do a uh, a knob on this uh, threaded rod here and then if I extend this rod here I can have a knob over, out here but it's not really that important um, you can see here I made this holder for now I just uh, put in four M4 screws and this will just slide directly into the into the top frame here now I'll just insert the PCB and we'll actually fit pretty snug here. There is a bit of play here and that should go away when I have the fixed top frame here. And now we can open up the frame or the top lid here and insert oh sorry insert our frame. It's a bit tight fit here with the microphone and the camera but I hope you'll suffice. Also I, I added uh, an end bracket down here. There's an end bracket so the screen will be um, fixed in this direction okay so another thing I did and I should probably show you is that up here uh, here these screws here these there are four screws that lock the the stencil frame into place and I, there's a small spring underneath you can probably just about see it Let's see, there's a small spring here. So that means that when we undo this screw, the, we will make sure that the screw is coming all the way out. Uh, otherwise, we'll damage the screen. And uh, yeah, we don't want that. Okay, so what we can do first is we can try to uh, tension up these screws here. We have two on either side. Also, these screws will do just a tiny amount of rotation so if we need to rotate our frame ever so slightly we can do it using these four screws it shouldn't be necessary because everything should be perpendicular but it never is in practical uh, in real life so we're gonna tighten these down as much as possible by hand and then i'm just gonna use a small tool to And you can see that it shifts about, but we'll see if that is a big issue later on. Okay, so now our frame is fixed, and actually the, the, the frame of the machine is, is really sturdy. So now we want to align the... Um, let me just get in the far closer look. Okay, so I just did a manual focus. Now we should see that we can translate the whole PCB setup here with my screw so 
there's one axis and we'll do the other one. And lo and behold, all the pads just show up. So just like this, there is a bit of play here, like two, two ten tenths of a millimeter or something like that. But that is a really light pressure we need to push in this to get the, the frame all the way to the PCB. So whenever I take this um, the squeegee, I have a metal, metal squeegee, squeegee right now, we should be able to get it all the way down. So that's the next uh, next thing I'm gonna try and try to to actually use this thing. I'm just gonna need some components for this design. So this was the second part of the screen machine build, as I like to call it. I hope you like it and uh, maybe even want to try to build your machine. It's definitely cheaper than the commercial uh, units that are available. So until next time, thanks for watching.